So it, we have, um, this is the uh, EDC meeting for November 7th, and I think we'll just get started. Um, there are agendas here. We're going to put up the agenda on the screen, but there are agendas here if you want to see them in advance. And we have a quorum with Mika. Um, and I think this is all we're expecting. So, okay. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? First item. Courtney, I have your thing at the end under old business, if that's okay. okay. That's fine. Um, the only thing that I'm thinking about, not, the, uh, not to the agenda, is, is anyone taking minutes? Oh, yes. Um, we're recording this. So Sally is, um, I'm going to try to, yeah, so yes, we're yes, covered for minutes. Good. Let's leave it at that. Um, and, okay, uh, hearing none then, uh, citizen comments. Um, now, before we start with citizen comments, um, or in the topic of citizen comments, one of the conclusions from the visioning project was that some members of the community would like other ways to participate, particularly interactive online ways to participate in town government. Um, and so we are testing at this meeting an online, so, so Macy, as usual, is thank you, WCTV8, is broadcasting live on Facebook, the EDC meeting. Not, not today. You're not broadcasting it live? No. Oh, okay, well then, it's unlikely that the people will come and call into the chat room. So. Well, the reason being is that uh, Facebook has changed its protocol and rendered our equipment obsolete ah. as of November 1st. Okay. Okay. Well, then, when you no longer need to monitor the okay. chat room. But, okay, then we will try this. We will I was excited for this right. opportunity. Very much, Wendy. Well, Charlie will be very happy. Charlie thought this was a terrible idea, <laughs> although he said it somewhat more, not much more diplomatically than that. But, um, uh, so we will test at a future meeting um, the notion of chat rooms so that during public comments or potentially Q&A that people who are watching live on Facebook can actually submit, uh, could actually submit comments. You should probably touch bases with the TV station and tell them what you're doing so that we can yeah. be prepared for yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, we, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, I just assumed that it was... Uh, that it was happening. Uh, I didn't know it the day because I tried to stream something uh, the meeting last night and uh, we couldn't connect. So. Yeah, okay. No, that's right. We'll, we'll do it the next time uh, and we'll coordinate in advance. So. Okay. Are there any are there any citizen comments? There being very few citizens. Beth? Can I? Yeah. I just only, well, because we're on TV and because um, we have a related, obviously, mission for the chamber and the EDC, we had this fabulous um, family of six come into the chamber office several times this week. They did, they're going to move here from Texas. They're remote. They're involved with the, the state of Vermont program. One of their children was going to sit through the high school. Um, they went to the high school. They loved it. The mom came in and said, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Is this community really is wonderful as it seems and we just talked to Kathy and I both about you know as her husband's a basketball coach and you know all of that so it, it just was um, it just was a great um, experience and you know that happens a lot but it just happened this week which is you know you're here in stick season and you still like the town <laughs> so fight up to the EDC I should have. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't want to <laughs> scare them. Give them a few weeks to settle in. Anyway. Well, that's great. That's good to Thanks. hear. Let me just ask, since some, someone from the audience is speaking, Mika, could you hear Beth when she was speaking? Yes, mostly. Um, I have, yeah, it would be great if people could speak up, but I also recognize that I'm throwing a piece in the work by being online no. or on the phone, so no, no, it's, that's fine. It's I'm, all good. I'm just trying to gauge how, what it's like on the other end. Any other citizen comments? I appreciate that. Thank you. No? Okay. Moving on. Uh, approval of minutes from October 3rd, 2019. Is there any comments about the minutes? And if not, could I have a motion to approve them? So moved. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? I'll second. Aye. Okay. Um, any opposed? So I'm going to have Mika. I, who who oh, seconded? Yeah. You, you did. Okay, fine. Larry. 
Oh yeah, minutes. Okay. Uh, next item is the review of the Montpelier meeting. Um, a, a, a small but dedicated group of us went to meet in Montpelier. This was triggered by the governor's visit to Woodstock about three months ago. Yeah. And it would, as he was describing the things that the state is doing, they were essentially identical, or half of them, you know, that related to economic development were identical to what we were doing. They have a website, they're trying to attract visitors, they're trying to figure out whether social media works and how much to spend and all of this good stuff. So, uh, and, and so we called Montpelier and they set up a morning that we spent with um, the head of the economic development uh, department, the head of housing, the head of community development, um, the head of marketing, and so forth, and it was uh, it was very productive. And we had some members of the EDC there, and a, and some members of the town, and some of the here were five takeaways. Um, nothing for us to act on immediately, but one is that downtown designation is worthwhile considering again. I think one of the reasons I haven't been involved in all of the discussions. Some of you have been for longer than I have, but one of the problems I think was the notion, the concept that you had to have a full time new person dedicated to the downtown development organization that was created just to do downtown development. And that's not the case. There are other examples in other towns where the role is shared between that organization and some other organization. And, and so it, it looks like it's much more feasible. And they were really encouraging us to look at it again. Charlie was at the meeting, and obviously uh, he's you know, much more knowledgeable about this. And so he is, you know, I think, so we, we, this is something that I think we What's could the, would just, Can you give just an example just for what, what they promote in downtown destination? It's basically the downtown designation opens up a, a, a tranche of loan, uh, of grant opportunities that we're not currently eligible okay. for. For things like, I, I mean, things like renovating uh, storefronts, um, Maybe things like transportation and sidewalks and things like that. I don't know. Transportation okay. is it's a trans huge piece of yeah. it. Yeah, that's it's right. Bringing transportation. Employees. You can also lower the speed limit if you're a designated downtown, yeah. even below 25, which the state doesn't allow now. So there are, and you know, the tax credits as well as tax the credits, right. the loans. Yeah. There's. So when, when a group of yeah, so tax <coughs> credits for even for private developers, you know, right. can can benefit from the tax credits. So. For, for doing things like like converting you know the second floors on, on Central Avenue mm -hmm. Central Street to apartments or something which is not economic mm -hmm. uh, the second opportunity was sorry can I go, can, go I, can I just ask one question Please. and it seems like maybe I might be the only person that doesn't know this but what does downtown designation mean exactly like historical or no no it's it, it basically is Vermont, as I understand it, Vermont has a strategy of trying to concentrate development in the da in downtown areas because the state is too s small. It's, it's not densely enough populated to sustain development outside of a anywhere. And so they're trying to reduce the number of places that they do development, and the downtown areas are a natural target for that. So um, there's criteria you have to meet to yes. become that. Right. Yeah, so there are some criteria, and one of which, one of the criteria is you have to have an organ, you have to have a group of people doing something that are organized to do it, and that requires some, uh, gotcha. that requires okay. some resources that we thought in the past was not really workable for a town of our scale, but we were encouraged to relook at that because it might be. I guess that's a simple. Thing. Can I just say, I gotcha. Mika? Okay, we, thank we you are, for the explanation. I appreciate it. Yeah, Mika, we are currently we are a designated village center right so that's the same group of people that make the designated or village center and we are eligible for loans right now um, tax credits right now like someone sure. applied for something on Central Street last year for as a tax credit um, but we're not eligible for any loans or grants right so yeah village designation is like a lot is like um, downtown huge white it, yes, we're, we're currently right. in the smaller. <laughs> okay, a second opportunity okay. is to Thank feed you. is to feed the state website with Woodstock information to enhance our marketing reach. So the state has a website just like us, and they're doing the same kind of things we're doing. And it turns out that Stowe, who I now I used to think was just like a great place to ski, and now I view as our after this meeting as our arch enemy in, in <laughs> economic development, <laughs> apparently sends sends um, the state. 
uh, information about Stowe every two days. And so they, you know, a third of the time they publish that. And so it's just free extra yeah. visibility. So we should We're try to figure out how to do <laughs> Yeah, right. So we should just figure out how yeah. to do that. Um, the third point was about the state of state program, as I think you all know, and again, Sally has to provide more of the detail, but it wasn't successful. The people didn't show up, basically. Right. And their response was, give it time, because, you know, Rutland, for example, is on their 17th round, and they're just sort of now starting to, it's becoming successful, right. but you have to give it time. But they also talked about the importance of what they called on-site activation. What they mean by that is, if you've got a big event, put a booth there, you know, to, to do, to, to, you know, with a realtor and the school principal and whatever in it. The marketing committee has thought. We, we will be Perfect. Right that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. So, so that's excellent. Yeah. Um, fourth is, and maybe I'm the only one, because it seemed like other people in the room, everyone knew what Big E was. I've never heard of it, but it's the Eastern States Exposition. Well, Courtney, you must so you've done a trade show there. Yeah. You really don't know what it's all about. So, but we can participate for free, and it's just this big show in Connecticut, is it? Just no, no it's Springfield, Mass. Springfield, no. Mass. And 1.6 yeah. million people come. Billings Farm always participates. Okay, and we can participate as EDC or as Woodstock. We can participate. Right. It's free. They'll pay for it. You know, they'll, we get a booth. So. Um, so, and it's next September. We just missed it now, so. And then something called neighborhood designation area for housing support, which is another, I presume, tax credit, loan, grant type program. So we'll, we'll ask the housing team that does that work to do that. So there's a couple of people here actually um, who were there. Do, do you guys want to, any, any other things that I left out? I think you summarized it well. Yeah. Those were, yeah. Okay. I, that was very interesting. So it was, a good, it was a good meeting. I have to say that having come from New York, which is a big state, the state government, in Vermont is incredibly responsive. <laughs> I mean, they actually answer the phone. And, okay, um, so we just, so sorry, next item, uh, review the grant schedule and the annual planning meeting. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over with the EDC, Larry, this is a repeat, and for those of you, most of you were here already, but um, we've talked about all of this, but now we've sort of nailed down the specific dates that are consistent with the, with the suggestions we made about general timing of things at our last meeting. So. Today we held a grant workshop um, for large grants optionally. The orange is optional. Pre-applications will be due prior to our next meeting. That should say December 5th. And at our December 5th, 5th meeting, we'll review all, any pre-applications that come in and we will voluntarily assign any, some of us to be coaches or advisors to those folks if we want to. Um, actual applications are due January 7th, and the annual planning meeting is now set for Saturday, January 11th. We'll talk in a minute about the timing of that, at which all applicants need to be present. We'll go through with a schedule every application. We'll hear, give people a chance to briefly present, ask, we'll ask questions, and then we'll shut off comment and discussion. And it's a public meeting, but we'll have to do our business and basically vote to approve things, and then we'll bring it to the select board at their 20, meeting on the 21st. And then, of course, if there is money left over in the small grant pool, if we decide to set a small grant pool, then, um, then we will continue beyond January every two months. But um, we'll have to see. And so there's a couple of things that we should talk about uh, tonight. Sorry. First of all, the pre-application, um, I just went ahead and made one. And so it is pretty straightforward. This is what it asks. It's one page. This is what people with, a 5, 000, with an above $5,000 grant would come to with us come to us with in December if they want to. Brief project description, how will it affect any of our four priorities? What would the impact be? How much roughly is your request and how much is your total project budget? And that's it. And these numbers aren't binding. It's just this is what we think. And the only reason for having this information is so Julie, you can say I'm interested or I'm not interested. You know. mm -hmm. And then and so the December meeting, a good part of it will be to re re receive any of these applications. Any, you know, any comments? Or, I, don't, I, I, have, I have two comments, really. Um, one is I would encourage people who, who have their act together to even go to the actual application and, and go further than this so that uh, when 
you have somebody uh, on the board who's helping them, they'll have a even greater idea of what, what they're planning to do. Um, just, I don't think it's part of a formal process, but I, I wouldn't discourage people from doing more than that. Okay. And, yeah. and the other thing was that uh, if we got these pre-applications as they come in, if they could be sent out to us, and somebody just said, oh, geez, I'm really, somebody on the board said, I'm really interested in that. Um, they could be. There was a, a woman who asked that question. We could jump in and just say, hey, let's get yeah. going. You know, we don't have to wait until December 7th. So just two comments. Okay. One comment. Should we, um, in, in, as we're talking, as, as people are getting interested and in this like initial pre-application phase, is it worth including some information on E the EDC's initiatives that we already have going. I'm thinking most specifically about marketing Woodstock because we have um, a pretty. It's not like an airtight budget, but it's a. It's you a, have a solid. It's a proposal. solid budget, right. and we have a well thought out plan. And um, that's not like. It's not that there's no room, in that for any a really good idea that someone in the community has. If someone right. has a great idea, that's fantastic. But. Um, it does cover web marketing and, for example, like this um, Stay, welcome tent yes. type yes. thing. So, right. like, we, we, these are things that we're already, we are. Right. We don't want someone to propose a welcome tent. Exactly. Right. exactly. We don't want yeah. someone to make that kind of proposal, put all that effort in, and then. Right. So, so we. Could we funnel? Yeah, absolutely. So, at the work grant workshop, I put up the page which shows the nine projects. Now, all it said for marketing was marketing. Yeah. Right. It's, so, it, it, so I we think we're encouraging people to apply under that umbrella. Yeah. Right. We it, should it, share. It's in our Fine. best interest, Good. and it's also not fair to the applicants. Yeah. To explain more. Okay. So let's figure out how to um, how to communicate this in mm -hmm. the next few days or something. To, to well, also, the pre-application would tell <coughs> us that, and then you know Julia could sit down with the person and say, you know, really, we've got this covered. But I think you're sort of suggesting that we might do that now rather than come yeah, off the so, I mean, okay. I, it's just not. I, I would hate for someone to gotcha. to go too far with an idea right. that is redundant or. Yep. Right. You know, okay. if, especially because if someone's coming up with ideas for marketing Woodstock, that's fantastic. We should tell them we're already working on this. You, why don't you think about that? Well, or it's like, why don't you know? Right. Catch well, it before it goes too far. Right. If it's not something that's applicable. Or I mean, by the way, if they do come up with something and you really like it, we can, add, you know, we can as absolutely a, we can add that to the. Budget. But my point is that what we're trying yeah. to do is pretty public anyway. Right. So why not make no, no, it more public? It's a good yeah. idea. I think if an application too has, it's a really good economic development idea that's pushing something, there's a marketing piece to it, we could probably say we could shift some of our efforts that already exist into to something yeah. that we really believe that will help us drive whatever traffic we need to come here. Yeah. And our budget is not, it's not that it's, it's, you know, so firm yet. However, it is tackling two of the three, two of the five things that the marketing, that, that your Montpelier right. meeting, yeah. the, the fact right. that like our, it, it makes me, yeah. it's very encouraging that we, as the marketing committee, came up with the two, two of our primary focuses yeah. cover two of the five right. points that they make. No, it's good so news. So we're, we're on the right path. Right. Let's like. Yeah, that's excellent. No, it's great. I think we're all yeah, uh, vehemently agreeing. Right right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not till the end of the meeting, but yeah. Okay. Um, any other things about the pre-application? Okay, I, these are all, I think, good ideas. And Mika, sorry, I just realized th this document, Mika, is on our EDC website. If you, I I'm on page seven. Absolutely, yeah, I've been following along. Okay, fine, all right, great. Um, okay, now, we have some decisions and discussion to have about the annual planning meeting. So we've blocked out January 11th. That will replace the January 2nd meeting, and I think, remember our decision was we want to have it as early as possible in January, but not on the heels of New Year's, or, you know. So I think we've got the dates worked out. Um, I propose, I think we're going to need, I don't know how many applications we're going to have. I, you know, I think it's better to block out more time, but not the entire day. So I'm proposing 9.30 to 2.30. I figured if each application took 15 minutes, or, or, or 10, let's say we could do five an hour, because some of them will be small. We could do 15 or 20 in four hours, and that still gives us an hour or two to vote, you know, to sort of prioritize the vote. Um, I, I, this, is a, this is one time, because it saves a lot of 
you know, we, we eliminate the RS meetings and so forth. So it's 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 burdensome. But I, I would I would go the opposite direction. I th I think that we could find a, a major proposal that there are going to be eight or nine of us, and we may have a lot of questions, and I wouldn't want to cut them off. Mm -hmm. And okay. I would say we'll aim for that, but we could go an hour or two so, longer. Okay, so you would you would set a certain <coughs> time and yeah. And tell I, everyone to plan to. I think give a time frame, but we have to go over. It. Okay, great. Mika, sorry, you're going to No, I agree completely. I, I would urge us to sort of err uh, on the side of caution and and not rush into things that are going to take a bit longer than than perhaps we thought. Great. Okay, fantastic. So, I, I, why don't I? Why don't we schedule it from nine thirty to four, and then and we'll block. We'll all block that out. I suppose it's possible it could even run beyond that, but I mean, I, that's... NFL playoffs. Is that... Oh, yeah, what is January 11th? Is that a... Is that, that's sure, a, it's a playoff. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> four o'clock, probably. Yeah, right, so four is a good... It's not a bad time. To, <laughs> all right, we missed the one o'clock game, but that's fine. Okay, um, the other thing is, and, I'll, and we'll say this at each meeting between now and then, I guess there's only one more, but um, I, I'm not opining on anyone else's behavior as to whether or not how comprehensively you you all go through the documents that are prepared for each meeting. But I occasionally have only skimmed them rather than fully read them. This is the one meeting of the year when we actually, we're only going to have four days from the 7th to the 11th where we really all have to read these proposals and know what they are because to be able to ask questions and so forth because we're, we're intentionally compressing this down into one time in order to be able to prioritize and hear everything we can't be looking at the things for the first time. So I think all of our other meetings we're doing fine at preparing for, but this one we're really going to have to make sure we read. So I'm just kind of warning myself, I'm speaking to myself as much as I am to all of you. Um, but So please block out some time on the 7th, 8th, or 9th to, you know, 10th, whatever. Um, all the applicants will be present. And then I'm announcing this publicly again. I did this in the grant workshop at, you know, one of the problems that the ERS subcommittee had. Um, I didn't experience it, but I've been told it by you and Barry and many others, is that having to make decisions with people in the room is hard. But that's what we're going to have to do. If we're going to operate once a year and as a full commission, we're legally required to do that. And so I will be better as a chair, and maybe I'll even appoint someone to whack me on the head so that citizen comments at some point will then be restricted and we will, they can listen to us, but we will be having our meeting to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm kind of saying that publicly into the camera now for anyone who's watch, who will be watching. Um, that that's how we're gonna have to run the meeting, so. Makes perfect sense. Okay, All right, any other, any other questions? Yeah. Okay, uh, any other comments or questions about the annual planning meeting? So I think we've now, we've gotten to a good, Good place. Okay. Um, these, these, this we presented this chart in uh, at the at the uh, um, at the at the grant workshop. Okay. Scheduling of grant prior grant requests. So, uh, whenever uh, I'm trying to think of, I can't. Th I should have thought in advance of an analogy. But when you shift from sort of path A to path B, something always gets caught in the middle. These three things got caught in the middle. These are proposals that were submitted expecting a uh, grant review cycle that we departed from because we've changed to a new process. Um, these three doc these documents were in the materials for last meeting. They're in the materials for this meeting. Just very briefly, the Friends of Windsor Central is a group of people that are advocating that they want some funding to do a kind of a visioning and advocacy process for the new school. Uh, Revels North is the, an existing program that wants to move closer into Woodstock, and the Woodstock Rec Center is looking for a small funding to paint the ceiling of the, of the little theater. The question tonight, especially since there's only five of us, I think should not be whether we should grant these proposals. It's whether we should consider these proposals prior to our annual planning meeting. If I'm opposed to that, bless, <laughs> bless you. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> it's very interesting to hear someone sees over a speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I'll, 
I'll use my prerogative as chair to get my point of view. Can you say that again? Right. <laughs> um, these are, you know, good proposals. Again, most of the proposals we receive in general are good for Woodstock. These are good for Woodstock. Uh, but I really feel like um, granting proposals now rather than in January really limits our ability to compare proposal A to proposal B to proposal C. If we do decide to review <coughs> these now, I would schedule, I wouldn't do it tonight just because there's only five of us, I would schedule an immediately a meeting because these are urgent and time sensitive. I, I don't know that they are, but if the, some of them, there are some implications of not doing it now, then, uh, then we would schedule an, a meeting you know, in a week from now just for the purpose of reviewing these three. So does anyone have a point of view about it, Julia? Yeah. The Revels, if I'm understanding correctly, the Revels North one is the only application that requires an answer that, that or that, that benefits in a real strategic way from having an answer now versus in January, correct? That's my reading of it as well. Well, okay. see, I thought that I read that the Friends of Windsor Central wanted to start right that, off. Sure, they may want to start right off. Yeah, but what is the cost? They, do, they want to start in October, but I don't know if it's um, well, uh, who am I to say? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I'm sure they would like to, but yeah. I'm not sure what the whether right. the cost of not doing so is so great and as the, to the, call and, it. And the rebel thing was so a matter of advertising. And yeah. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the rec center certainly is something that I would love to consider, right. but which we can consider in January. Right. So I am also opposed to considering these right now. Okay. Courtney, do you have a point of view or? Can I, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Mika. I'm sorry. Uh, I might just say out loud that since these are the applications that were caught in the middle through no fault of their own or ours or whatever, just, you know, circumstantially, uh, I do think that we owe these people um, a response. I think if it's possible for us to get together and, and discuss this and come up with a yay or an A, I, I think it would be the right thing to do, personally. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, Courtney, I, I didn't hear. What, do you, how do you, what's your point of view? I'm still thinking about it. Okay. Larry? Uh, I, I agree with Julia. I, I think that... Um, that in fairness to all the other uh, applicants, uh, we should we should consider these as part of the larger group of applications that we're going to be getting in, in uh, January, and that they should be part of that. I see, I understand the problem that Rebels North has. What, what is the timing of, of each of these coming in? So the Rebels North. Wait, is anyone does anyone know? Are you Brian Cook? Brian. Okay, I fine. I figured you're the person that I don't know. <laughs> So, so Brian is here. Um, I, I called Brian this afternoon and told him what I was would say and what the issues were and so forth. Do you, do you want to comment? Um, I mean, I, I think that it looks like you guys have the letter that we sent. I mean, I think basically we are in a position now where we're trying to just determine where to host Summer Revels uh, now so in, in November. And the timeline that we were looking at originally had the select board making its uh, determination based on the EDC's recommendations by you know third week of November I right. think which would have allowed us to include this information in the Christmas Rebels program so for us the January timeline might mean that we're talking about summer rebels in 2021 instead of summer rebels in 2020 um, because I think right now there's another location that we could just just sort of know that we have um, it's the same, same one that we've done for the last several years, but I think that we're just kind of excited about the idea of returning to Woodstock, but there is some risk to that um, for us. And so I think that the expedited original sort of like timeline um, makes sense for us strategically. I mean, we'll defer to you all, um, but, um, but I think that if we're looking at Summer Rebels 2020, then the November timeline is the one that definitely would, would just be easier for us. Right. So. Maybe, I don't know if you, could you hear that as... One of, one of the things we need to do is get a... Well, anyway, I, I don't know if you could hear that, but Brian Cook was the executive director of Revels. Not, not very well. Revels North was basically <laughs> explaining, it's in his, he basically was explaining what's in his letter, which is that, that there is some, that 
not the timing of this grant will it will influence. They they won't be able really to bring it to Woodstock in two thousand in twenty twenty if we do it on the timing that we're proposing. They would have to bring it in twenty. They would consider it in twenty twenty one. So is that because of the advertising? Okay. In the well, I, mean, I I think part of it is is just a process of just just starting the organization of it. I mean that sometimes in some ways starts like right after. Um, uh, Christmas ends, yeah, so like December 23rd this year. Uh, but really, the advertising is the big one, uh, just so, so that I mean, because that's kind of our biggest opportunity to get the word out early that that Summer Rebels is moving to Woodstock. You know, we're hoping that over 3,000 people will see the show this year, and if it's in the program, just just it kind of is the first alert that like in the same way that Christmas Rebels is moving to Lebanon Opera House, perhaps uh, Summer Rebels is moving from Norwich to Woodstock. Um, so I, th I think it is a great opportunity for us. I just feel unable to, um, especially if we're soliciting grant applications that have events involved, I feel unable to assess um, the monetary, like granting <coughs> a grant mm -hmm. yeah. um, without seeing what the other grant, like n now that we have made this statement, that we're going to grant events and that we're seeking them and we're going to assess everything in January, um, I feel ill-equipped to, to say, give a yay or nay right now. When, when did we receive this one? Well, uh, it was, yeah, it was for the September deadline. It was for the September deadline, so September 30th, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And it stinks that, you know, you're, yeah. you're being compared, like, that in, a previ in the previous iteration of the granting applications, this application would not have stood up against any other events. Um, we were in the middle of so changing that everything. Is yeah. point. no fair. No. So without but this grant, you can't, you, you would not be able to go to Woodstock. Unless and you I, raise money otherwise. I, I think it's, it's unlikely that we would. Um, I, I think that, that if, if we had the grant, I think that there would be just this, this great sort of like confidence, like, okay, Woodstock's behind this. Um, you know, we could potentially do a Summer Rebels in Woodstock. I mean, we did about 20 years ago. Um, but I think that we have systems in place on the Norwich Green that we're, we're comfortable with. But I think that we're sort of thinking like, wow, it could be potentially be better in Woodstock. Um, but this would be sort of like what would get us going. Well, um, yeah, just because we just, we, we, we can't say for certain, like, if it's something that would have a big success in year one, but maybe if we had the EDC support in year one, then maybe right. give it a few years and it could grow. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that, that, that I agree with Julia, that, I, that, that the primary reason why I'm in favor of a, a single annual process, and I wasn't always in favor of it, is because that almost everything, every application we get is good. Mm -hmm. It's just they're not all the same good. and it, And we, you know, we get one event and one ceiling painting, and one educational lobbying proposal, and then you know, so it, 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 and then we have to get the three of those again three months from now and so forth. One thing that I would consider because it sounds is that um, for any of these applicants, I, I would be happy to at our next meeting to just give you some early feedback. It, it wouldn't be because some some of the decision is or even just offline, some of the decision is comparative. Mm -hmm. And in order to make a good quality decision, I think we need to have that comparative process. But some of it is also absolute, you know, just not comparative. This is a, makes sense or it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. We could give you that information. We, we, not tonight, but we could set up a process where you just come and meet with three or four of us and we'll just give you some feedback. Mm -hmm. And you can decide based on that feedback whether you want to take the risk. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't take the risk, you know, understand that and, I, you know, and I would hope that you would apply again, again next year for 2020, yeah. uh -huh. you know, for the following, for the following year. And by the way, if the decision can't wait till January, you might want to apply this year for 2021. Exactly. And in which case, I would be willing to grant to consider that as a 2020 grant because mm -hmm. the, our schedule wouldn't allow would mean that you were constantly missing the deadline. Okay. So we, we could certainly I'd yeah. be certainly comfortable right. doing that. Okay. So, so all right. Any other? Are there any other comments? It's not, we just happen to have someone from one of the applicants here. Uh, any other comments about the process? And then I think we should vote on this because we did have some disagreement. 
Okay, so um, so then uh, all those in favor of all those in favor of considering these grants now. Hang on, before that, sorry. Can, can I make a condition? Make a motion. Oh yeah, we need to make we more, need sorry. a motion. But I would also like to say that I do I agree with Mika that this is that it stinks for these people yeah. and that we need to be doing more to reach out to the applicants and explain like. We're having a conversation with Brian right now. Our process is clear. Our decision making is pretty clear to you. You know the path forward, and you know that if you apply in January, we will consider for next year. Like right. Well, I, I, Brian and I actually spoke having... prior to this meeting briefly, but but this conversation here was more was also more informative. So we should do the same. If we, what you're suggesting yeah. is we should do the same thing with the other yes. two. Yes, and that's okay. a condition of my vote yeah. to not vote right now. Got it. Okay. So would you like to make the motion then? To... Sure. I move that we not consider, that we postpone judgment on the September round of applications from three applicants um, pending proper communication with them um, until the until January January. Planning, meeting, planning meeting. Okay. Got it. All right. Um, any second? Does that, that stipulate what the proper communication is, you know, that you're sort of willing to, you know, we are willing to fight and, and, and try to help out and compensate as much as possible. Yeah, that, 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 let's just say, like, good, hearty, That's implied in there. Okay. hearty communications. <laughs> right. But I think that the criteria, let's, let's just add in, okay. giving advice and helping as much yeah, as possible exactly. within the constraints. That's what we proposed for Rebels North. So okay. I, I move yeah. that. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, Courtney, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. So now I have to record the vote. All right. This is exciting. You're a good annotator. I'll keep you doing that. Okay. All right. Um, budget, uh, okay, budget allocation for small projects. $5,000 or below. So uh, I, I just want to talk about the budget process for January for the annual planning meeting in the course of, talk, of getting to this discussion. Um, I just want to highlight, and this question was brought up in the grant workshop. And so I shared the following, I didn't share the chart, I, I didn't have it, but I, um, I shared the numbers. So up until December, Roughly speaking, our revenue will be about a million one fifty. We will we have already granted seven hundred and ten, and that leaves about four hundred fifty thousand in unencumbered reserves. That number has grown a bit since last year because over the last four or five months we have made very few grants because we've been reconsidering our process, and we would estimate that we would get new revenue of roughly three hundred thousand dollars in calendar twenty twenty. We're now kind of shifting our mindset to a calendar year. You know, so I think there's going to be some debate, either at the annual planning meeting or in town, at the town budget meeting, sort of whether to take a short-term perspective or a long-term perspective on this money. And, um, you know, the short-term perspective is we have the money, let's spend it. Spend the reserves, the 450000 I'm going to call that reserves. The long-term perspective is that we're seriously short of funds to undertake major projects, so we need to save the reserves. I, I, I'm only raising this because I, I want to highlight, I just want people to get ready for this meeting. I don't think, I don't know what applications we're going to get in 2020, but we may not be short in 2020. In other words, we might get $300,000 worth of applications. I don't know that we're going to get 500000 Because the big applications, the renovating the full renovation to the green um, and housing, and potentially I mean, I've taken a quick look at your proposed budget, a much more significant investment in marketing, which might or might not make any sense, but it certainly is not infeasible, won't hit in 2020. So I just want us to be prepared, and I want to start to communicate to the town and so forth that, that, not, that, that spending the money gets us something and loses us something, and not spending the money loses us something now and gets us something. And I'm going to be an advocate for the long-term perspective. I think reasonable people can disagree about this. Um, but I just want it to be out there publicly that this, I think the EDC, because we have $450,000 that's sitting in reserve, I think that it's going to, you know, around town meeting is going to become an attractive 
target because the town is going to have to make some tough choices increasingly. So, now, that's, I think we decide that at our January meeting and we see what the proposals are and we take this into account and we decide how much to spend <coughs> in 2020, how much to budget. So, mm -hmm. so that, what, what we do need to discuss is the issue of budget for small projects. Um, as we approach, let me, I'd just like to make a proposal. We have talked about in the past setting a limit on the number of small projects. I'm sorry, on the amount that we would spend on small projects because we want to encourage big projects. Um, I don't know, I mean our reserves have grown to a pretty healthy level and I don't know how much of a budget constraint we're going to have. I guess I would sort of feel a little uncomfortable if we only had $250,000 of proposals of, of adding to our reserves. I'd rather, if we had other, you know, if we had Sixty or seventy or eighty thousand dollars of small projects. I probably and we thought they were good. I probably grant it. So I'm not sure that we should set a budget limit now or in December for small projects. I'd rather make the decision in January. Sure. And I think that exposes us to you know someone saying, "Well, you have the money. Why aren't you giving it to me? You don't have a budget limit." And I argued in the past for that budget limit. But as we're kind of approaching this meeting, I'm wondering. We've had we've had we bigger discussions in the past about always having a reserve and having a certain percentage of the annual revenues going toward this bigger bucket to do right. even much bigger things, especially right. the uh, revitalization projects, which are just so huge. Right. And some of some of those things are was part of that conversation. So it's tough. I, I think of things like five years, six years down the line, we're going to want a whole brand new website. Right. That may cost yeah. seventy thousand at that point. Right. So there's got to be something there for catas not, not catastrophic, no. but, but, but big, episodic. Long, yeah, episodic. Yeah. Well, in fact, when we put the budget together, I, 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 we're, I'm definitely going to have proposed, you know, coming into it that, you know, that a con you know a, some sort of small contingency fund or put something in reserve yeah. or something like that. So, but I think, I guess what I'm really saying is that, is that taking these kinds of issues into account, it's probably... The, the benefit is beginning to grow on me of having this one period of time, one day, when we basically set our plan for the year and having all the information in front of us, and then we make the best decision. And if one year, or at least this year, it's to spend more or less on small projects because we need to spend more or less on something else, then we'll make that decision yeah. on that day. Yeah. So, I'm, uh, but anyway, I, it's a little bit different than what, I've, what we've been talking about up till now. So, Julian, I think that there is a need for us to be agile and to capitalize on to to have. A rolling a fund that can address rolling applications in a small for, for, for small budgets and I am also in favor of not capping that necessarily but I also think that by nature of changing um, this change in our uh, in how we are conducting the board's you know focuses and priorities and uh, the change in how we're conducting ourselves is also a change it represents a change in what we're trying to do like we are automatically like structurally <laughs> we're shifting to a long-term perspective right. so mm -hmm. structurally that's what's gonna follow right and I think the clearer we can be with with at people in the town and you know the, the people who come to us with um, under five thousand dollar projects that you know we we're excited to see what people come up with, like what people want to do. I'm, I'm excited. I've, I've always been an advocate for what we used to call community grants because I think that it's important to piggyback yeah. on enthusiasm from within the community, that we can only do so much as a board of people sitting here. And right. we need people in the community who have good ideas coming to us with those ideas. But so I think that the long term focusing on the long-term perspective. Yeah. yeah. We need to. Larry? Uh, I was just wondering if we can... Yeah, I... Oh, wait, Miko, hold on one second. Larry first, and then Miko. Oh. Well, go ahead, Miko. Uh, you right, can say something smarter. Sure. <coughs> no, go ahead, Miko. You're being deferred to. My turn? Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I guess I was just going to agree with, with Julia there in saying that, you know, being an advocate for the community grant, um, I have always 
similarly. I, I feel very strongly about that. And I guess I would also just add that, you know, it is often the smaller amount of money that is, and, and so I say this not necessarily using anecdotal data from what we've received, because I'm honestly not thinking about that. I'm, I'm thinking just sort of broad strokes. It is often the small idea that is sort of for a small amount of money, and somebody doesn't know exactly where that pool of money is going to come from. It's often that idea that is the most innovative. And it's often the people who are looking for the, the big numbers who are people who may have other pools of money to dip into or have other resources or perhaps have, you know, more information to to put together a big plan where they can go to a bank or write a grant or, you know, so I just don't want to lose sight of the smaller numbers, the smaller maybe idea that could potentially blossom into something much bigger. Or, and maybe it doesn't even blossom into something much bigger. Maybe it, it benefits 30 people, but it, it benefits 30 people in a really big way, in a way that perhaps they may not have been able to be benefited otherwise. Okay, good. Larry? Um, were you uh, suggesting that at, after, uh, well, the, the uh, January 7th, we come up with a with a budget figure for these? Does that, is that no, no, standard? No, no, no. What, what, what we had previously discussed was that prior to the 7th, mm -hmm. we would set aside a pool of money for small grants. Mm -hmm. And therefore, at the 7th, we would possibly be constrained by that limit we had just set, we had previously set. However, as we, you know, so I'm proposing, I guess I'm sort of leaning to, I'm, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable, I'm now comfortable not setting any limit and simply deciding on the seventh how to allocate the funds. Well, you have to set a limit. You only have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, no, no. no. I mean, I mean, not setting a. <laughs> we, we had right. talked about setting a separate <laughs> limit for yeah. the small projects. Yeah. Right. I think what I've come, what I personally, at least, the shift in my thinking has been that there's only one thing that will stop us from making small grants, and that's having too many big grants. And that's perhaps what I think, if I can retranslate what Julia and Mika are saying, is that's probably the only thing that should stop us from making small grants. Yeah. Well, if it's something that we right. all otherwise agree, that was a exactly. major game changer right. for the town, we'd right. be yeah. like, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so therefore, putting in my desire to, my desire is to get to that point. We don't get there any faster by setting an arbitrary budget limit. Yeah. We get there faster by getting more people to submit. Bigger, well, and we get bigger there proposals. faster by making it clear, clear that, that, that's we are, what we want. that we are right. aiming exactly. at long term, that we are hoping right. to. To your point about you know, the structure. Yeah, right. we, we've made structural changes. So, so you guys come so at us with the structural. Right. So therefore, I'm proposing that we not do what we said we would do in the past. We just let it. I don't think we need a motion for this. We just I not think do we're it. Making, yeah. Once we get through the big ones, then we make, start making decisions right. on the small. Yeah. So I would just, my brain just keeps wondering about reserves of some sort. I just. I, trying to think of a formula, possibly, that makes sense. Because I did, I was just thinking, I, I didn't mean to say the word catastrophic, because I remember somebody brought up something about f when there's yeah. a flood, and we have to throw some money at something to help things move along, um, you know, whether it's putting porta potties on the green or whatever, you know, that something is there uh, to help out the town. Well, the, the town should and has, should be doing that. No, no, they should be doing that as well. I'm just saying it, it, one piece of a pie of yeah. a bunch of things. Well, so. Yeah, I think I, I think that we'll probably there have maybe something other than what they normally would do yeah. that would make sense. Well, look, lose I, the economy yeah. back again. Right. Like marketing would start to the greater hope side. Yeah, community. maybe boosting the marketing more if, and if something like that. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't. I think it's a good. It's a good point, and I think this is a complicated discussion about. It's not just the factors that I was describing. It's also the factors you're describing. There's probably some others. Yeah. Um, and I think my guess is, in the end, we we will probably each year. I would think we will just decide in January. You know, at the at the annual planning meeting, this is how much. You know, yeah. given what we can kind of see on the horizon, and maybe having some unknown extra. This is how much we should spend, and this is how much we should keep. Yeah, and we'll do our best to decide. Right. Yeah. But having reserve, the concept of having reserves, whether it's for an emergency or 
strategically for the fact that we know there are big things coming is, I think, really important. And I think we're beginning to establish that. Yeah, I, but I think it's also difficult to, to predi- like, if we get $450,000 worth of awesome ideas, we're s- our fund, by nature of what it is, continues to make money. Yeah, no, no, we could, so we absolutely, we could spend seven reserves, fifty on January 7th. You could absolutely. spend a lot of money on January 7th and then say, okay, in, in my, I agree. Our <coughs> reserves, we're not going to spend anything else for the next six months or whatever, well, which goes counter to my right. small right. applications. No, no, uh, the, 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 re, the, the reason, the, absolutely, absolutely. And in my, my opinion, my personal view will be that if we got those big proposals and they weren't in the area of housing, I, I probably wouldn't be enthusiastic for yeah, them. And if they were, totally. I would spend it all in 2020 yeah. because it's better if, than spending it in 2021. Kind of stuff, if, if a developer comes in and says, I'm I want to do for, this, it's absolutely. addressing, it's going to tackle a giant problem that you have. Exactly. And, and it needs 750000 Absolutely. But the key word that Julia used was we need to be agile. And I think yeah. that's, that's exactly mm-hmm. what we're doing. The, 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 the probability of us getting enough small grants that it's going to put a stress on our total pot, I think, is pretty low. low. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so I think we're in agreement. So we I agree. Okay, All right, good. So we're all in agreement, so there's no, nothing to do. Okay, just the last couple hey, of... Hey, I agree, too. This, this is Michael. I'm back in. Oh, Michael, excellent. Oh, hey! Sorry. <laughs> we have I've been listening to you guys. Sorry, Michael, I didn't need it. You know, I turned off the option to ring a bell when someone comes on, you know, like a beep when someone comes on. So that's, uh, that was a good choice, John. Yeah, right. It can get oh. annoying. So sorry, I didn't realize, Michael. Welcome. Okay, and Michael, we're going through. There's a doc. It's just really the, an agenda, uh, but it's on the website if you want to know. So the coordinators report just briefly in Sally's absence. Uh, just two things that um, uh, just to highlight. One is she has the, the visioning project has released their vision, and at the next EDC meeting. And possibly at a public meeting, Sally is going to pre- present that. She couldn't be here today, but she she notes in her coordinator's report that it, they're going to bring this around to the various different government boards and are hoping that they will ad- formally adopt it. And I don't know whether we are ready to do that. Um, I can't imagine either that we would wordsmith it or that we would reject it. <laughs> so the only other option is to endorse it. Well, I suppose we could not do anything. But I was going to, just sort of in the interest of moving ahead, suggest that we, indi- we uh, I, I propose a motion to approve the vision statement as drafted by the visioning group. And this is the first part of it, and then there's the second part. This document is in your package, but I just put it up on the screen. <coughs> so I don't know how people feel about that request. Are you, are you making a motion? I am me? making a motion. I'll to second it. Okay. Is there any discussion then about this? It's fantastic. No. I think everybody, yeah. I've always felt that what follows the visioning yes. statement is what matters, and this certainly creates an umbrella for the EDC to do its work. So I, I was fine nothing, with it. Nothing to disagree with there okay. on my end. Okay. Courtney, any, no, any comments? Or? Micah, Miko, Miko. <laughs> <laughs> Mika, Michael, Jesus. <laughs> you so funny. Right, the two of you can never be the only two people on a conference call in the future. <laughs> Ever again. Mika? No, I'm, I'm good. Michael, any, any comments? I think you're muted, Michael. No, no, no. Okay. You guys are awesome. Keep rolling. Okay, good. All right, so then uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hey, Michael. Okay, so the motion passes. Um, <coughs> and. Sorry, uh, uh, just procedurally. Because Michael and I are both on the phone, do we need to be saying our names? Do we need to do that? Yeah. That whole kit yeah. little yes. we, we, No, no, <laughs> hold on. Sorry. We don't need to do it for this because it's unanimous. But we need to go back. Gotcha. To, to, and, and actually, 
to the earlier ones, I wrote down who voted which way. So I, I think that but that's all you need. That's all yeah. we need. I think. Yeah. I mean, it, it's effectively. Unless Mike, was Michael listening at the time? Michael, we. Were you on when we took the vote? I think that, no, I think the first vote. Okay. So it's only if it's not unanimous do we have to then go around and go individually. So can we agree that, that we effectively gotcha. did that when Mika objected to that? Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay, yeah, thanks. Good, good point. Um, <clears throat> oh, one second, so unanimous and Michael joined. Um, the uh, we agree, oh, they, we're now into old business. We have two items of old business. The first is work stream involvement. Um, last time we agreed that these would be the work streams that the EDC is going to put forward in 2020. That people could choose to only participate at, in the monthly meetings, or they could add to that and participate in some of these work streams. And they could do so either by putting their name down or by simply being aware of what the work stream is doing and dropping in from time to time. I've heard from many people, not everyone, and this is sort of the current state of affairs, which is uh, Julia and Courtney on the marketing initiative, Joe and Larry on Teagle's Landing and the kiosk and the trash receptacles. No. Okay, this is all to be, can be changed. Um, Charlie and Michael on the River Loop. Charlie, um, sorry? That's what I'm on, yeah. On the River Loop. The river Loop, yeah. Okay, all right, so uh, so, what, what, so tell me what, what to cross out and what. Uh, well, I don't, know, I don't know anything about the kiosk, and I didn't know oh. from okay. Beth. I, we were, yeah, I the chamber okay. owns the kiosk. Right. Is that? I said the chamber owns yeah. the kiosk, so. I'm, I think Joe should be on that. I'm a, just a little. I, I mean, it, it needs to be painted. It needs some. No, no, no. We would. We, we, you'll okay. have complete veto power to, to, <laughs> to deal with it. No, no. We, we, we. I mean, we want it to look better. Yeah, no, no I understand. Right? Okay. You, since you own it, it's the same thing. Yeah. Since you own it, you'll, if you don't agree okay. with the plan, you we won't do it. Complete. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. But but you hold the paintbrush and paint, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So but we have not discussed any of that to date. Right. But no, as this was just as, this, as a work. Yeah, this work. is just for this is just for EDC members, and then as soon as we have some EDC members, we'll then start to recruit people. And obviously, for the kiosk, Beth, you would well, I hope you would be involved. All right. So I'll take you off of the trash receptacle. No, no, I'm. Okay. A, I'm oh, the, you want to be take, take me off the kiosk and back onto the river loop. Okay. Off kiosk, <laughs> on river loop. Okay. And then, What's the river loop? What's the river loop? The river, the river loop trail is a proposed <coughs> trail, three and a half to four miles, a walking trail that would start at the East End Park and go east, go away from town, okay. along the river, and then up a little bit and back. It's back from the road. Back, back. It doesn't cross the river and it doesn't cross the road, the current version. Follows the old rail trail. Oh, okay. Uh, not rail trail, but rail trail. Rail trail. And it's using shared property. There's about four property owners or five that all would, would give access to those those pieces of land and make it happen. Um, and it's just about to, th th those details will become clearer in the application in January. They, they're sort of trying to finalize now what it might look like and. Um, so we don't have any people yet for engage with the community and the retail storefront incentive program. I'm not sure we need someone for the retail storefront incentive it's program. It's sort of automatic if we fund it. it and right, just there's only one or two, like, it's done its job. Right, right, exactly. There aren't that many vacancies anymore, yeah. which is fantastic. Um, so. It, it, I think this forms a starting point. It'll perhaps evolve. I, I do have to say that Charlie basically said, put me where you need me. And I said, well, we're going to put you in all these different places. I'm, so I have to confirm with Charlie that this is right. But I think this is what he's interested in. So nothing really for us to, to do. It's just we, we, I, I will reach out to each of the groups to, put to, you know, to make clear what we have to do to put together the proposals for January 7th. But I think the groups 
like all the physical amenities things, I think you understand that, and you guys are already working on your budget and stuff. So, I think we're pretty we're in pretty good shape here. So, what about co-working space? Uh, so that was that's a yeah, that's another project that um, I think you because we didn't improve it, we didn't decide on it as a full EDC. Mm -hmm. So you and I have been brainstorming about that. I wanted and Julia. And Julia, that's true. Oh, and Miko. No, no, that yeah, was a different. Yeah. And Miko also, yeah, okay. So maybe, uh, well. I'm sorry, uh, my battery ran out, and so I missed probably the last, like, three and a half minutes. Okay, we're, uh, we're, If there's something I need to vote on, I just need to know what it is. No, no, sorry we, about that. we were just really going over the, who, who had volunteered for which of the work streams, but, but this next topic, it, which Larry just raised, is what about the project for the co-working space? which you, Julia, Larry, and I have been talking about. Um, can, can I suggest that the four of us meet to discuss it and either we'll bring it forward as a proposal to the EDC in December or we might, as a group of residents, pr propose it. Um, uh, but, and, I th and there's some things that have happened since the last time we talked that might, that, that might be further enabling this project. So, is it, Mika, is that okay with yeah. you? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sorry, Chairman. With regards to the uh, right business environment for local businesses to yeah. succeed, do you have um, uh, sources for current business or owners where they can um, get health care in groups and resources to do that and how to expand a small business, how to get to the next level? Do you have those resources already or is that provided? you know, on a state level, or I'm trying to figure out how do people grow a business here and what resources do they have in order to get to the next level to get the people that they want to come here to help them, electricians, plumbers, right. you know, all these people who, who need more help. But how do we help them expand their businesses and give them the resources because, you know, as any small business, you may be good at one part of your business, but you may need help in another. Right. And do we have business, um, Consultants, perhaps that could work with them, or is that maybe a um, a grant that we could, or a workshop, or part of the Optimist group? Um, could that be part of the Optimist working group? I'm not really sure. <laughs> my my questions are blind. No, no, no. no. But I think you're making a nice list for that group to discuss. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There is a, there yeah. is a score of the Upper Valley. Okay. So the score network has retired professionals uh -huh. who will work one-on-one -on -one with a business and they also offer workshops say quickbooks workshops right and, and how to have an e-commerce business you know for the down months to to build up the businesses that are mm -hmm. here I'm just always trying to figure out how to help everybody in town it, with their businesses that, so that they can be successful and i'm just you know wondering is this something that we you know, make very available, or does everybody have to recreate the wheel and figure it out and, you know, try to find something that is hard to find when we can offer it, maybe with <coughs> an optimist yeah. group. Did you want to say something? Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. And health insurance, yeah. unfortunately, the legislature took away right. the opportunity for groups to buy Okay. Health insurance, so you have to go. We had it for a while. We right? had it for we had it for a while, and then it was taken away, and then it was came back for one year. But the, through the chamber, we do offer dental and vision insurance at really reduced rates. Okay. Um, and we publicize that. But I think that, I think as Courtney yeah. said that your suggestion is exactly yeah. one of the, this yeah. group create yeah. right business environment for local businesses is a is a nascent. Group, and we haven't done anything yet. We've all agreed that we want to, so I think we would. Right, and then I, we talked. You talked earlier about um, access to loans and grants for people, you know, right. small businesses that are offered by the government. But how do we connect all of the people here that are working every day and working hard in their businesses to give them access to that easily, so that they know it's there? Because I wouldn't have known it was there. Right. You know. Um, I think being very strong and helping people who yeah. are small business owners would bring people here. These if they great. know that they have these, really and it's problem. not just like you have to figure everything yeah. out. 
Now these are great ideas for that group, and I think what that group, and so I'm, my name is thanks to that one. What I would do to start that group off is to hold a brainstorming session to basically say, okay, what are the things that we ought to be doing, and just like the things that you just described. I also would say that um, I would like the the concept of like a lecture series or like a networking to like right. a monthly like invite someone from X company who's to tell us. How, like, you, do you know that podcast, How I Built This? I haven't seen that. There's a yeah. podcast called How I Built This, which is just interviews with entrepreneurs. My favorite! And, and it's, it's people who <laughs> built successful companies yeah. or brands yeah. or, you know, whatever, talking about how they did it. Right. So if you, for example, were to propose to submit a grant proposal that laid out, you know, we're going to have this event. It's going to be once a month. It's going to be held here. Here are the people who are already supporting it. I have these six speakers lined up for the first six months and the next six months. Like, we'll get that. That, that would be an interesting grant proposal we'll see. Yeah, I just feel like everybody's trying to recreate, you know, invent a wheel that is known. And it would be nice to be the resource well, you know, so that people are not struggling yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. I think also we, we've got a vehicle with the Chamber of Commerce is there, there's supposed to be a business to business mm -hmm. um, channel. So, you know, I mean, the grant would really uh, working through Beth or maybe getting a grant together to put on those programs like that, that would be really helpful. I think that, yeah. I think it's something that's great for you to get that committee. Done. Yeah, I, I, what, I, what I worry about is, is this is just a process point, it's really a timing point, is I, um, would like, I mean, I, I know this seems like it's slow moving, but I would like that group to basically come up with a series of these proposals, a kind of an integrated comprehensive plan, whether that plan funds the chamber or whether it funds, you know, you or whether it funds, you know, different groups. But I, I, my guess is that we can't come up with that by January 7th and that what this group would do is to try to build that plan in 2020 and then come with a bigger proposal that says we want to set up or, or augment existing groups to kind of do four of these ideas, which, which probably is what you need to, you know, to kind of get over the hump of getting people right. really to change what, you know, how they, how they work. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting you not submit a proposal now, okay. but if you don't, I, I don't that know. group I think would I build it it's in 2020. It's just really something that I started thinking about yesterday when I was talking to somebody that, you know, about yeah. bringing people in, how he would build his business, and. Um, you know, to, I didn't come with an agenda right. or an idea necessarily, but it was just, I'm not really sure who, I wasn't sure this was the right group to ask the question well, or if it was the chamber. So I'm just feeling I think my way both. through. Yeah. 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 Uh, like, uh, to my eye, and I'm not on this <laughs> work stream, be. or, no, don't have time, <laughs> <laughs> or, or a member of the chamber, <laughs> or a small business owner. So I am purely the peanut gallery here, right? But um, if you look at, like, I'm just looking at the website for how I built this, and they have, you know, as diverse as Luke's Lobster, FUBU, Lara Bar, uh, Gimlet Media, Christina Tosi, and Milk Bar, and The Knot, the website, right? Yeah. E even something, like, as, a lot of these resources exist, so to my eye, like, even something as basic as a listening party right mm -hmm. with like you, you don't necessarily have to have the speaker a speaker the right but if you have like a listening it. party and you have three people from the area who already live here who work in like in weddings right if you've got you're listening to the not mm -hmm. episode and you've got a wedding planner from the inn and someone Flowers. who does social media somewhere somewhere in town you know so like the idea is is kind of to, to, to my eye, there are a lot of yeah. opportunities to, with kind of minimal um, structures right. in place, piggyback off of... Or even cost. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. host it at the chamber, like at the Welcome Center or the right. chamber. At the, like, we have people and we have... And we have a variety of successful local businesses that can... Exactly. And manage. there are national, like, um, resources that are... Al people are already talking about this. All right, so, I mean, I think this, yeah. this is the beginning of the discussion of what, you know, this, so let, of that, of that work stream. So let's continue the discussion, but, I, but tonight, it is the right 
venue to bring it up, but tonight isn't the time that we're going to push it further. So let's push it further over time. It's great timing, though, because I yeah. have to say, personally, I have to say the, the, the EDC to me is a very new organization the way it is today. And over the last two years or so, we've evolved, and even this year we evolved to finally to a point where we've got really focused areas that we're just we're really just starting. Right. So that, that information is great to feel. Yeah, it's with. been terrific. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Mika or Michael, anything to add to this before we... This, this issue of work stream involvement or the particular notion of supporting the local business environment? Other than to say that I love everything that Julia just said, no. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, uh, Michael? Yep. I think Michael's muted. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I missed some of the comments from the audience. It's hard to yeah. hear. We've got to fix it. It's not your fault. It's We, we have to fix the sound system here. Which, um, but yeah. Okay, the last item of old business is, and I've put this under old business, I'm not, is the EDC marketing budget, which I think we had talked about in the past. And uh, if you, I guess you just want to briefly kind of get us ready for what's sure. coming down the pipe. Yeah, and by the way, we should probably get invested in a couple of mics to put Yeah, exactly. So, right. Um, sure, I, we had a great, um, you want me to go forward? Yes, go ahead. Um, we have a great, uh, very active uh, mar marketing committee, web, web committee. We really started off from a website from a while back. Um, and Beth from the Chamber is very involved. Um, and I think we had about six or seven of us there. Um, so the idea was really just to create a start of a, a marketing budget that can help at least uh, get more awareness out there of Woodstock, Vermont, and the surrounding areas. And, and uh, you know, in considering that we obviously don't have a million dollars to work with that wanted to come up with something that was reasonable but still impactful. Um, we, we went uh, forward and put this. Um, I do want to note that if you look at this, I'm going I'm to talk about the advertising or marketing true dollars uh, besides um, there's a salary in there which probably should not be in there from a the marketing budget standpoint. So if you take out the 25, really in the neighborhood of a, of a $55,000 uh, budget <laughs> in there. So um, 45,000. 45, sorry. Thank you for doing And we've, we've thought 000. that maybe the events marketing 5,000 is a little low, possibly. So we're, but we're, this is ballpark. Yeah. So, um, you know, I put, um, you could, you can play with these numbers in a lot of different ways. Uh, but f the first, the first three items are basically, uh, you know, direct digital marketing. And right now, we we spend a lot of money on the website. I've said this many a time. We have a website that has no uh, drivers except for a blog and some uh, search engine optimization out there to try to get it up there. But we're never, we're not going to be able to compete um, and get visible enough uh, for um, with Stowe. With Stowe. Well, with Vermont in general, yeah. And then Stowe. Um, in Woodstock, if you're searching Woodstock terms, we come up pretty quickly just because it's a brand that's out there. Um, but um, we do need to do a lot with search engine optimization. Uh, we've got a lot of static um, copy in there and, and uh, content that needs to be updated. Um, but so that, that needs to be managed on, on, a, on an annual basis. Uh, cert, and then um, actually the order should be I should have search engine marketing. Now that's just simple um, Google ads and uh, Bing. And if, uh, if you look on your searching now, you're, it takes you a while to get through the ads till you get to the natural um, listings. So um, we definitely need something out there and put us right out in front. Um, and then uh, social media ads. Uh, um, I had a little influence on this because I've seen a lot of success with Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, they're hot, they're making it so even though we uh, do play in those channels, um, we're not boosting it in, in any way, shape or form and, and Facebook and Instagram are just going to make it harder uh, for us to do anything in there. So um, we're. That, that's definitely an area and so we so we put a, about twenty thousand dollars in there and that's a very reasonable amount to start um, so if you think about the search engine marketing alone the SEM that's only that's like 800 and change a month but we could do something with that um, and then um, 
website enhancements and maintenance. Let me talk about website maintenance first because we have to do some sort of website maintenance. I can't remember right now. Do we have a contract for web maintenance at the moment? We have to. We do. We do. But so it, it ends in yeah. February. And I think this is the amount. So yes. you do it with the web developer or somebody else who can handle that uh, with their current web developer or somebody else. Um, but uh, basically, just make sure you don't shut down. Make sure you don't have errors no bugs. out there. No bugs. Yeah. Some of this, a lot of this is automated, but when something comes up, they've got to go in and fix it. Um, so that's an absolute necessity if we're going to manage a website. And then uh, website enhancements, we can play with this anyway. We can say we're going to do, we're, we're going to do zero enhancements and not do anything. Or if we come up with something new for um, attracting residents here and we got to build out some new pages, then we got to pay somebody to do that. So, um, so that, that we put 5000 into. And then... Um, Julia came with a great idea about att attracting uh, influencers uh, to town, not just your traditional mm -hmm. media, but um, influencers that come in here. So let's say we have an event that we really want, uh, or, or we can create an event with influencers, or have um, somebody that just has that um, impact that um, we can work with. Uh, $10,000, somebody, they command a lot of money, but there's probably with our business partners in town can probably do a combination of of Food. trade and yeah. and uh, dollars. We're so about, like not not welcome basket, wrong term, but mm -hmm. right. Give us an. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about Give that. An iPad or a car. You just had Sweet Pea here. What's her name? Sweet Pea. Yeah. Right. Right. And you know the the links to her shoes, which you are wearing, and you know all of just I, I'm. Yeah. I was just thinking about how to do that in Woodstock because you could certainly. Definitely, yeah, do that. for sure. Yeah, and, and I think my part of what we were talking about, too, was that um, any money spent on um, tackling influencer-type people can also work toward, for example, other goals that we have, for example, diversity. If we're trying to portray Woodstock as a more diverse place, we need to be inviting more diverse people right, than, right, like... Right. Through more diverse you know, channels. Through more diverse right. channels. So the, the point is that it's something that works on multiple levels in an, in a more organic way so we um yeah and sometimes maybe somebody can help us get some too we need somebody probably to go after that for us um and event marketing this was another interesting idea that uh, came up was um to have a presence at our special events to um ask questions uh answer questions of, absolutely yeah you know um why somebody would want to move here. So yeah. ask us a question. We have a booth, we have banners, um, and uh, we're available at all our major major and events. And even if it's, we go to the Big E, something there. So was, we put $5,000 initially to I purchase some okay. banners, to yeah. get some skirting Five, maybe ten, for the yeah. desk. Uh, I, th I think it's some marketing we'll hope, yeah. a more, we'll hope to have a more firm number for yeah. our you know, this yeah. is a ballpark, yeah. meeting, but this yeah. is ballpark. Let's say there's something and credit where credit's due. That actually was that that came from a conversation from Sally. Um, that that the genesis of the kind of yeah. like seed of that right. was actually the Montpelier visit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not like we just came up with it on our own. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought that we um, had another figure in there for acquiring the influencers. Yeah, I it's thought the firing was the ten thousand. Okay. So, but the the, I just but realized I there's a piece missing person. here. I just realized, and that really is if we're going to do digital marketing, somebody's got to, somebody's got to facilitate with that. You know, either we extrapolate that fee out of there. So yeah. let's just say that fee is two hundred fifty or five hundred dollars a month if they're doing. Um, that has to be built in there. So um, something I've got to, we've got to take a look at. It. But um, in essence, I think you know, considering a budget of, of plus three three hundred thousand a year, and taking a, 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 a portion of that that really is impactful um, for supplying people with information, um, um, visiting here, living here, um, and uh, just general awareness, it, it we've got to do something. I have two questions. One is, what about the TV? That's a that's separate. Well, first of all, right, we can't afford the TV right now. Let's, we put in that we can keep building we, this budget, but the TV the, to report on the TV, we're not actually doing that t today. 
No, we have. We, we will have it the next. I'm in your budget. So no, we, we it's not part of your budget. No. We voted. We voted. Not. That was a we, grant. We voted to prioritize on web marketing, given the amount that we have invested in mm -hmm. the website already, and also given the fact that um, Katie, uh, everything we, what we've heard from the Montpelier meeting, um, if if paying Katie's salary helps populate, keeps our events in order, has us on in a presence on Instagram and Facebook, and populates the blog, and also stands to get those blog posts populated like uh, on a statewide level, that seems to be doing. Um, <coughs> it's working on multiple this, levels. This is a proposed increase, correct? Of the I, yeah, it's 25 is up five. It's probably I don't know exactly. Like it's a little bit of an increase. It's not a huge increase. Not much. No. But I, I, I guess I would say that that um, that it's that I wouldn't expect the budget to include anything for TV, mm -hmm. but I also wouldn't expect us to be able to opine until the TV pilot test is done. Mm -hmm. And at that point, there isn't anything that says that, it has, that if we decide that the TV is valuable, that we have so to cut $25,000 from yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think there's should, a big grant for additional marketing. These were the things market. that we are... Th you think this, will, this is worth $71,000? We, we, yes. we think that right. this is absolutely... Actually, I'm going to say it's worth $45,000. We're already facilitating somebody to manage the... Well, yeah, that's right. what I mean. But yeah. collectively, it's... Yeah, 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 you yeah. think that this is a yeah. reasonable... Do you think that all of these things are worth spending money on? I and, think and we'll find out about the television. It if would that's be difficult for television to displace any any of these funds. Well, I think it's hard to well, say. How much was the television for the whole for not even a full year? But it was equal to all of that. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait, hang on. The fact is that almost all of this money is um, it, it it's maintaining a strong presence. It's it's not yeah. re we're not really yeah. adding that much. As very well. much and so I'm making, it's like yeah. when I was saying that to my eye. You can't think about a website or a co-working space as things that are optional anymore, like or, or social media presence. Investing in that is just, it's the world we live in now, and, and there's more cost to not having it. Well, it impl it implicit in that is, is with due respect, it are facts that we don't have yet. Right. <laughs> in other words, it may be that, that investing in, I, I don't I don't have any facts to believe this or not, but it may be that investing in television is even more of a cost that you have to have in today's right. world. Yeah. Maybe today. Uh, my point is that, that the reason for the pilot test was to test this. Sure, totally. Yeah. And so therefore, yeah. we're in the middle of the test. You know, the, the, uh, by the way, I'm not expecting that the test will yield You know, 7.7, .7, yes, 7.2, no. It's gonna be a judgment call, so forth. I'll remind but, everybody. But I think it's dangerous no. to, oh, oh, I think it undercuts the purpose of the test to op to come to conclusions about the relative benefits of this type of marketing versus that type of marketing until we have the results. I well, respectfully well, disagree. Well, I don't understand. Okay, well, we have to have this yeah. kind of marketing. Yeah, I, I, I disagree yeah. completely because I think that this kind of marketing is not an optional thing. Right. But, but what if that isn't either? I, I think it would have to have rendered millions of dollars in revenue in order to prove that to me in order to justify the fact Fair that it, it is necessary. Fair and enough. Then having a website and having it well organized and having someone who is not Why is it an either or? Care I would it. think this is an absolute it, and then the other is exactly. an Exactly. I don't if think it, it's an either yeah, or. Yeah. It's yeah. only an either or if we run out of money. It may not be, but... Oh, my, I, yeah, I look at the TV one to me. That was just a grant by 30 people who collaborated together that, to ask for it, well, and we we said we were interested to see how it would work. Look, so so acquiring influencers, yeah. other marketing expenses would be the thing that could that is optional, but website and in, wouldn't, website maintenance and Katie's salary and a just the digital whole, marketing just the whole is level. yeah that that's just not there's no right. There's no that's thing. Not so that's, that's not optional. That's not optional. Doing but, yes. But, but what if, okay, I, I guess I'm making a philosophical point, and I think it's important because what if TV advertising is even more of a cost of, of doing business? And I, I'm making this up, but. It's not. Uh, no, no, okay. And now. The TV is dying media compared uh, to I, I have it's no, I have no. This is not yeah, how people sorry, are. But I'm, it just I'm is just going to say, I mean, unless that, that TV media is going through Netflix or some kind of yeah. streaming service. 
It is it is not the cost of doing it, business. It is. Not, not when it comes to who we are trying to yeah, to exactly. market to. I'm, so, I'm sorry, but like all due respect, it, it's not, it, Th- then, you're not going to get younger people to come to Vermont. Then, then, hold on, hold on a second. Then, it's then just the, not going to happen. Then the data will show that. No, it's not necessarily going to show a generational divide. It, well, absolutely. We know, know exactly who we're talking about. Or not, because uh, it depends on, on who's watching, right? So if, if the data shows, like, wow, these TV commercials were incredible. There were so many people that saw it. But everybody that saw it is somebody who is, you know, retired and looking for a second home or doesn't have kids to put into the school system or, you know, the data might reflect that it was an extremely successful campaign. And that is lovely. And and I'm not necessarily trying to take away from that. However, I am going to take away from it if, if we are trying to use that to justify you know, whether or not we should be spending our money on it when in fact we are trying to get, build our school systems and we are trying to build our community and we are trying to get a younger and age group into our community. And what are the dem- okay. <clears throat> and what are the demographics of the people who are clicking on our website? I think we don't. Yeah, we don't. I, I we, don't we don't. Know. I, I understand. Right. That's my point. My, look, I. I, 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 I well, make, we do know the demographics, the average way. age what? of the people who are on Instagram. Right? We do know the demographics of like. We can definitely get that information. We can get, there's information that we can get. Good. The fact is that it's not. I don't don't understand why. I asked because I just asked why it wasn't in this budget because I thought it was a marketing issue, but it's not. It's a it's its own separate thing. So why do we have to discuss? Uh, your yeah. budget looks great. For what you we also well, hang on. We also I think it's just philosophical. The, the conversation no, no, no. well, the conversation yeah. that we did have also during our meeting was that none of us at the table is a television expert. There are yeah. var- various of us right. at the table right. are we bring significant expertise in web marketing, right. in general marketing, in editorial absolutely and so we did not feel um, you know if, if someone who is right. really fantastic at television wants to join our well and I think she group and I think the person will come back yeah the, the, uh, I guess the marketer I, and, and you're saying have an open mind and I think no 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 I, I, I'm so, yeah I'm saying from a process that. point of view I think we are obligated to have an open mind I don't think it serves the marketing budget well I, I, I'm, a, I'm opposed in principle to having categories of spending which we simply must spend, period. I'm opposed to that what, whatever the realm. I, I, because I, then there's no real point in having an EDC. We just, we'll just simply have some group of people state what that is. I, I'm not, I actually happen to agree with you that this is how we should be spending our money. But I disagree with you about the reason why we should be spending our money that way it is not because we state that it is not for discussion. That's not a good enough reason. There, there, I think that we will be able to have a better reason for it, like we can say what the demographics of this are, and we can see what the demographics of the TV advertising are, and we can show that the demographics of this are better for us and our strategy for exactly the reasons we said. And I think it's, uh, we have an obligation to do that. I, 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 yeah, I, but that's yeah, we don't have to do it. Agile, we do learn something from it. Sorry, Mika first then. There's some data we'll get out. Wait, wait, sorry, hold on. Mika, and then Courtney, and then Julia. Go ahead, Mika. Um, I don't disagree that it's important to to analyze the data. Right. And at all, at all. And so, and so, the only thing I will say is that it is important that we remember, or or it is important that we gather all of the data Agreed. and ensure that we are looking at 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 all of the factors that determine whether or not this is or is not a good spend. I agree completely. Yeah. Right, and there was Quite a good plan put together on what we can do, um, how we can organize that data and get it together and, and make some decisions. And it's not going to be perfect. It's yeah. going to be far from perfect. Yeah, you know, but I know. So if we, yeah, we struggle with trying to find I'm measurements, sure. that's for sure. Sorry, Julian. Yeah, okay, so, so anyway, this is, it's a philosophical point. I personally think that this is very m- money well spent and wouldn't be, and would encourage us to think about, what, not this year perhaps, but whether we should be spending more and maybe right. a lot more. Right. So, okay, and, and sorry, did you have any comments? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, anything, Mika or Michael, any last comments? I think this is our last item.
No, I'm good. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll just to kind of reiterate, I don't know anyone that still watches TV, so right. it will make a lot of sense to me. Still then, then the data will certainly show that. Well, All right. Uh, any, is there any new business? I mean, I watch sports. Is there any new business? Um, not for me. Okay. Can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any? Any? Third. Oh, All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. All right. Aye. I don't watch. Twenty-five minutes. I was going to say. I still watch sports. I watch the news.